Hi, I'm Sharon Olszewski from Pineapple Paper Company, and today I'm going to show you how to make a holiday shaker ornament. In the video description, I'm going to put the link for you to download this file in my free downloads library. For reference, this is file number 288. Here's what you'll need to make these ornaments, and I'll put the entire list in the links below. I'm using a Cricut Explore Air 2, but you can use a maker. You want a cardstock, craft board, which is like a poster board in white or beige, as well as clear acetate. You'll also need adhesive vinyl, transfer tape, and these little plastic sprinkles that or shapes that you can put inside the ornaments. You'll also need paper crafting supplies and optional little silicone mat. So let's head over to Cricut Design Space and open our projects. The upload is on the left hand side of the screen. Since everything is already pre-designed, you just have to hit upload and then select the image and then add to your canvas. For whatever reason, when files are being uploaded into Cricut Design Space right now with one of the new updates, things are getting shuffled around. Uh, don't worry about it because we don't really need them to all be seen because you're not going to be adjusting them at all. But if you want to adjust the colors or where they are positioned on the screen, you just need to hit on group. I zoomed out a little bit so I know where they all are. And here you can decide if you want to change the colors. I'm using this teal, of course. Um, the brown is for the craft board or craft paper. Um, if you want to change the colors so that way you can see exactly which color applies to which mat, you can do that here. But let's go ahead and let's click make it. I'm going to be doing this all on the mat. As long as all of your mats look good, all you have to do here is click continue. And that will prompt your machine to connect to Cricut Design Space and then we can start selecting our materials. The gray mat is for the clear acetate. I have acetate saved to my favorites, but if you click on browse all materials, you'll find foil acetate, which is a Cricut product under plastic. Again, if you don't have that, just click on browse all materials, and then you can start typing in acetate, and right there under the compatible materials, foil acetate pops up. I like to change my pressure for more. Acetate is going to be used on a standard cutting mat. Um, just go ahead and line it up and you don't need to apply washi tape or anything like that. You'll notice there's actually like a covering over the plastic. We'll deal with that later. So just go ahead and click go. The one thing that you'll notice about both acetate as well as the craft board here in a little bit is that the Cricut machine will actually stop and cut each line twice. Because these are thicker materials and we're losing, using the Cricut Explore Air 2, they cut twice and then they come off perfectly. So let's head back over into Design Space and select our next material. Automatically, it goes to the brown, which is the craft board. That is under art board. It's a little thicker than craft paper. Again, I'm gonna select more. And we're gonna run through all of these materials so that way you can see exactly which material I select. Just like with the acetate, or as Cricut calls it, foil acetate, craft board will cut twice. So as it's going around its design, you'll see it pause for a second and lift and then continue to cut. That will make sure all of the edges are clean and you don't have any tearing when you release the design from the board. So I usually flip mine over and peel off the excess and then I use this like scraper tool to lift the pieces because I feel like it's easier when you're working with these smaller things. So the next layer is the yellow adhesive vinyl. You can select Cricut Premium Vinyl for this. And I just like Explorer 2 to be cut on more. The teal or aqua is actually cardstock. You can use medium cardstock. This is going to be the base of the tree. And then after the aqua, you have the navy, which is another piece of vinyl. That's like the Santa and his sleigh. So again, Cricut Premium Vinyl for this. This can be removable or permanent. And then the last uh, mat is the pink, which is the, the last layer of the tree or the top layer, and it's actually just a light pink cardstock. So again, for this one, we just want to pick cardstock. So I have all of my pieces laid out here. I'm using plastic snowflakes and plastic sprinkles. I'll have the supplies linked, but if you want to search for plastic add-ins or plastic sprinkles, a lot of these things will come up on Amazon or Etsy. I'm also using Beacon Zip Dry Glue. It's one of my favorites because it dries really fast. You can use hot glue for this, but good luck not burning your fingers. There's all of my cardstock and craft board pieces. I also have some transfer 
paper or transfer tape, um, my scraper, my weeding tool, just basic paper crafting supplies or Cricut crafting supplies. And this is one of my favorite things. It's a little silicone mat. I'm using it here just because it makes it a little easier to see what I'm doing on the white background. But I actually found that while I was doing this project, it made it really easy for the glue and everything. So if you don't have one of these, it's a good tip. That piece of uh, like protective layer, you can peel that right off and you saw me do that. And we do, I just did it on one side because now I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna add all of my vinyl decorations to the Christmas tree. Um, for these like little gold garland pieces, uh, I am just using my fingers. I really don't think you need to use transfer tape for this. It doesn't have to be put in an exact location. You just want to make sure that you leave some space for the Santa Claus, the little navy Santa Claus and reindeer that will fly across the tree. So you can use your fingers or you can use your weeding tool to lift these right off of the uh, vinyl cutout and place them right on the tree. For the Santa and sleigh, there are some really tiny pieces so I'm going to reverse weed this. If you haven't done reverse weeding before, I'm not going to peel all of the extra vinyl off at first. I'm just gonna peel out the little, like weed out the little tiny pieces that are there. And then everything that's left, I'm going to cover the whole piece or design of vinyl with a piece of transfer tape. And then instead of just lifting the design, I'm gonna actually lift the cut design right off of the backing. So you don't have to worry about weeding at first. You're just kind of going to transfer tape and weed all at the same time. So the most important thing about uh, reverse weeding, which is really great for small things like this, is that you need to make sure your transfer tape is on really, really well. And then you want to peel your transfer tape off at an angle. I like to hold it up just because I can get a little sharper of an angle. And if you notice, as I peel away the whole piece of vinyl, the design that I cut out is left on the transfer tape. You do have to be careful and sometimes you have to go back in and fix a couple spots. You can see here that around uh, the reindeer, my vinyl isn't quite coming off the whole way, but it's no big deal. As long as I don't tear the actual cut design, I'll just go back in there with my fingers or with my weeding tool and you can peel off that extra vinyl. For me, it's a way easier way to do small designs. I use this a lot for Starbucks cups or you know ornaments, anything that has really small areas. And you can see there was another little piece cut there. I just went in and peeled it right out with my weeding tool. So this Santa and reindeer kind of goes right in the middle of the tree. You don't have to make the reindeer run off the edge of the acetate because if you remember what the shaker ornament looked like, there's actually a border of paper that will go around the edge of the acetate. So it kind of goes right in the middle and I just rubbed it on. You don't have to be real crazy with it. The vinyl sticks pretty well to the acetate and we're gonna save that piece of transfer tape for a little bit later. So now that that side's done, I'm gonna go back in and I'm gonna take the protective film off of the back. Um, I either use my fingernails or if you can't grab it, you can use a weeding tool. So let's lay out all of our paper pieces here. As I took them off of the mat, I tried to kind of keep them, you know, the right side up or the way that I cut them, just so I make sure that they um, laid out really well. So the bottom layer is the craft board it just provides some stability to the ornament and i'm going to actually just cover that whole piece of craft board with the like aqua or teal uh, tree base i don't want to see the craft board but if you don't include the craft board i notice that the ornament isn't quite as stable the craft board gives the edges a little bit more stability so when you apply the layers and then the acetate everything seems to kind of hold together well. And especially if you're hanging out in the tree and kids are messing with it, you don't want a flimsy ornament. Craft board is one of those materials that are really good for providing that stability. I actually use it for a lot of projects, especially Christmas ornaments, just as a backing or as a middle layer or whatever, just to give that extra layer of stability and you don't really see it. Craft board is also what we're using to build up the layers. So if you notice, I have all of these, you know, 
outlined pieces, we're going to use those and stack them right on top of each other, one after the other, to create that space in the middle of the ornament. So that way the sprinkles or whatever shapes you want to use, they fill that space and have some space left to move around. And now that I'm doing this, you can see why I do not use a hot glue gun. I do use a hot glue gun for bigger shaker projects, but I am relatively clumsy with a hot glue gun. And because these are kind of small, I would definitely burn myself over and over. There are alternatives to using craft board too. You could definitely use cardstock. You just may need more layers. The amount of layers you need are dependent on how thick your material is, as well as how thick the filler you're using is. So for this project and these sprinkles, I'm using the craft board and I needed four layers to get a little bit of movement around my sprinkles. But say you have a Cricut Maker and you wanna use matte board, you may only need two layers of matte board. Uh, I do make these a lot on my Glowforge. And so for that, like I just use thicker wood and really it's you know maybe one layer so again, just kind of keep an eye on how thick your um, sprinkles are, how thick your paper are, and you can adjust as needed. So for the Christmas tree, instead of kind of having ornaments, I'm going to use these plastic sprinkles. These are actually um, add-ins for resin. So after you put however many sprinkles or whatever you need right inside of the like hole or space you've created, be a little bit more careful with the glue this time but this layer is just where we're going to set that piece of acetate. So because the acetate, like you won't be able to get under it to wipe any glue off, I tried to be really careful. And again, this picked up some dust even though I tried not to, so I'm getting all that off. Um, but now since you won't be able to get under it, you want to make sure that you don't have a lot of excess glue like seeping into the inside. Again, you're gonna wanna make sure that you get it on there perfectly and all of the edges are sealed. So I'm kind of going to like run my fingers around and make sure that it's pressed down really well um, because I don't want any gaps where the sprinkles can come out. And then the last step that we have is going to be the cardstock border. It will cover up that kind of unsightly glue and craft board edge and will give the ornament a finished look. We'll just place that on carefully and make sure there's not any glue sitting around the edge or anything messy and make sure that it's adhered really well. And that's it. Just add ribbon to finish your ornament. Thanks for watching the video. Make sure you get the password to my free downloads library where you can get over 250 free files. The link is in the video description. And of course, hit the subscribe button for more tutorials.